Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Hello, and welcome to this sleep story. I'm Tyler Boss. This sleep meditation will help you relax, de stress, and let go of any worries that are preventing you from getting a good night's sleep. If you've been struggling with anxiety, unable to calm your nerves, this Bible meditation will help you find relief. As you listen to the comforting words of the scriptures, you'll be reminded of God's unfailing love in the midst of every trial. Tonight, we'll be focusing on verses from Psalm 94, verses that assure us of God's unfailing love and support. We'll be encouraged to let go of fear and anxiety. We'll experience the freedom God offers as we lean on Him through every circumstance. But before we begin, please take a few moments to settle into bed. Make yourself comfortable and take a few deep breaths to help you relax. Whisper a quiet prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit to be with you. Ask for his presence in Jesus' name. Inhale and exhale. Feel every muscle relax as you center your thoughts on God's word in his presence tonight. Now, let me pray over you. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with this listener tonight. I pray that you will cover them with an amazing amount of peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding and comes from your spirit. I pray that no matter where they are in the world, and no matter what they're feeling, that you will be with them and free them from all anxiousness. Lord, please help this person release every ounce of worry and stress to you right here in the stillness of the room. Lead them to extend their arms as a symbol of letting go of all the things that are troubling them. Please help them. Help them to know that you are with them and that you love them deeply. Lord, I ask that you help this listener experience the freedom you offer when they look to you for answers and guidance instead of looking to the world. Please help them remain in step with your spirit, letting you guide them in every decision. Help them to abide in the true vine, allowing you to prune away all the things that don't belong. And help them to rest in the protective shelter of your wings. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, take one more slow breath in and exhale out. Listen to these comforting words from Psalm 94 
verses 18 and 19 when I said my foot is slipping your unfailing love Lord supported me when anxiety was great within me your consolation brought me joy rest in those words for a few moments each of us at different times in our lives has felt as though our feet were slipping either by our own choices or habits or by life circumstances of which we have no control we have found ourselves slipping away and even falling a time or two if this describes you please know that you're not alone other brothers and sisters in Christ have slipped as well and many have found themselves living a life of imbalance and struggling to remain steady on their feet but please remember this God's unfailing love is always there to support you you are not left to figure out things for yourself he is there to uphold you to help you get back on your feet and then to lead you in the way you should go you can trust him lean on him and rest in him there is great peace in knowing that God's unfailing love never leaves you he supports you every step of the way steady strong unchanging unfailing that's what God's love is rest in the stillness of the room and feel God's unfailing love surrounding you supporting you and setting you free let's pray precious God holy God as the remnants of worry and anxiety decrease we feel your love increase more and more thank you we praise you we rest in your presence and find freedom in your spirit for where your spirit is there is freedom tonight Lord break every stronghold of anxiety in the life of this listener cut the chains of fretfulness and unrest open wide the window of your peace and usher in the sweet fragrance of joy it is in the name of Jesus we pray these things amen listen again to our Bible passage of comfort and joy when I said my foot is slipping your unfailing love Lord supported me when anxiety was great within me your consolation brought me joy rest on the word consolation for a moment consolation means comfort compassion relief and strength your consolation comes from the unfailing love of God through Jesus Christ his son I'm reminded of a beautiful passage of Scripture that tells of a man named Simeon who was led by the Spirit to the temple on the same day that Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus 
to be dedicated you see Simeon had long awaited the birth of the Messiah the consolation of Israel and by the divine providence of God his eyes beheld the newborn King this is what Simeon said when he took Jesus in his arms Lord now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel according to the word of the Lord Jesus came to be the consolation of Israel a light to the Gentiles and the glory of his people he is your consolation your light and your glory through comfort compassion relief and strength Jesus casts all anxiety away and replaces it with perfect peace there is no need to be anxious anymore every need you have is covered in Jesus he comforts you he offers compassion and relief from every worry he strengthens you and leads you into the assurance that he has everything under control release everything to him when anxiety was great within me your consolation brought me joy rest in the joy of the Lord feel his peace wash over you like a healing balm in him you have received healing and renewal the old things are gone and the new has come all anxieties are taken away and replaced by God's consolation of peace in Psalm 119 we hear these words remember your promise to me and is my only hope your promise revives me it comforts me in all my troubles remember God's promises they are your hope they comfort you in every trouble he promises to uphold you with his righteous right hand he promises to love you with an everlasting love he promises to be with you always never leaving you or forsaking you rest deeply in the promises of God tonight doubt cannot remain where God's truth abides fear is cast out where God's peace resides anxiety runs dry as God's presence fills worries are calmed as the Holy Spirit stills gracious God please remember this beloved listener tonight as they sleep soundly in your presence and in your grace bless them as they rest in you keep them in the fold of your unfailing love and guard them through every hour of the night thank you Lord for freeing this person of all anxiety 
right here, right now. We trust you to cast out all traces of fretfulness and unrest. As this child sleeps tonight, I ask that you fill their dreams with reminders of your promises. Promises of your unfailing love and goodness. I pray for restorative sleep that will help them wake up in the morning refreshed and renewed. Thank you, God, for your comfort and peace. In Jesus' name. When I said, My foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Sleep now in the peaceful consolation of joy and be free. Free to live in unity with the Lord. Safe, secure, and surrounded by His unfailing love. Amen. Now, imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street. You're blind, so you can't see what's going on around you. But the crowd is overwhelming. Your voice cannot be heard. There are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into. The sounds, the smells, the dust, the clamor. Every day, it's the same. You keep asking and begging for someone, anyone, to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat. You hear no friendly words. You feel no friendly touch. In fact, you can hear some talking about you unkindly. Maybe thinking because that you can't see, you can't hear. All of a sudden, you hear someone shout, There he is! Everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual. You have no idea who they are all wanting to see. You try and ask people who is there, but no one answers you. Then you hear someone say, There's Jesus! You've heard of this man. His amazing teaching, his miracles. Oh, his miracles. The thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you. Oh, he's helped so many others. But then reality sets in and the hope drains from you you've been tossed aside so many times why would Jesus even pay any attention to you you just sit there try to listen to what's going on just then you hear someone call out to you did you hear that right did someone say your name? And then, and then you hear it again. Softer. Closer. Gentler. Not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way. So, so lovingly. All other noise has stopped. It's as if you're in a cave. 
no one around you moves or speaks it's Jesus you don't know how you know but you know it's Jesus and he has found you you feel his hand on your forehead you you hear his gentle voice and all of a sudden the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner light begins to break through and your eyes begin to focus and you find yourself looking directly into Jesus's eyes and Jesus is looking directly at you and you feel more love coming from him than you have ever felt in your entire life imagine being blind your whole life and then miraculously being healed imagine being overlooked ridiculed and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for Jesus chose you maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt that people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you but the truth is this you are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus and he wants what is best for you listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God and so we are for this reason the world does not know us because it did not know him God calls us his children so that we can get a glimpse an idea of what our relationship with him should be truth is there's no way we can totally grasp just how much he loves each of us it's too vast and wide it's immeasurable unchanging never-ending did you hear that never ending he will always love you we are all so precious to him Webster's dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly that's how God views you you have value you are not to be wasted or treated carelessly maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you that couldn't be more wrong God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you perhaps you've seen the verse John 3 16 on a sign in the end 
zone of a football game along the side of the road on a billboard but let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life God did that for everyone meaning no matter what you've done in your life God still loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you you're precious to him Jesus loved telling stories in Luke 15 11 through 32 in the New Living Translation he tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us even when you mess up in sin and don't feel worthy of God's love this story explains how God views you listen to this parable a man had two sons the younger son told his father I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money in wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son but his father said to his servants quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servants what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in 
His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed with me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. God is telling you right now that he loves you you are so precious to him no matter how much you've sinned God is still waiting for you to come back to him now sleep in confidence knowing that you are loved and are precious to God let's pray oh dear father thank you for loving us thank you for your grace and mercy I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight May the Lord bless them and protect them. May the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now rest in his loving arms. Let me pray over you. Father, you are so good to us. You are so kind to your people. You give us breath each day, and the moment that breath is taken away, we reside with you. Give this dear one not just the knowledge of your commands, but the deep understanding that brings about changed hearts. Help them not to be simply hearers of the word but one who listens effectively and lives the word help this child of yours hunger for you comfort and protect them as they sleep and may your Holy Spirit fill them throughout the night in Jesus name Amen Psalm 119 blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart they do no wrong but follow his ways you have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed oh that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws I will obey your decrees do not utterly forsake me how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word I seek you with all my heart do not let me stray from your commands I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you praise be to you Lord teach me your decrees with my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches 
I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways I delight in your decrees I will not neglect your word be good to your servant while I live that I may obey your word open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law I am a stranger on earth do not hide your commands from me my soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times you rebuke the arrogant who are accursed those who stray from your commands remove from me their scorn and contempt for I keep your statutes though rulers sit together and slander me your servant will meditate on your decrees your statutes are my delight they are my counselors I am laid now in the dust preserve my life according to your word I gave an account of my ways and you answered me teach me your decrees cause me to understand the way of your precepts that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds my soul is weary with sorrow strengthen me according to your word keep me from deceitful ways be gracious to me and teach me your law I have chosen the way of faithfulness I have set my heart on your laws I hold fast to your statutes Lord do not let me be put to shame I run in the path of your commands for you have broadened my understanding teach me Lord the way of your decrees that I may follow it to the end give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart direct me in the path of your commands for there I find delight turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain turn my eyes away from worthless things preserve my life according to your word fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared take away the disgrace I dread for your laws are good how I long for your precepts in your righteousness preserve my life may your unfailing love come to me Lord your salvation according to your promise then I can answer anyone who taunts me for I trust in your word never take your word of truth from my mouth for I have put my hope in your laws I will always obey your law forever and ever I will walk about in freedom for I have sought out your precepts I will speak of your statutes before Kings and will not be put to shame for I delight in your commands because I love them I reach out for your commands which I love that I may meditate on your decrees remember your word to your servant for you have given me hope my comfort in my suffering is this your promise preserves my life the arrogant mock me unmercifully but I do not turn from your law I remember Lord your ancient laws and I find comfort in them indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your law your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lodge in the night Lord I remember your name that I may keep your law this has been my practice I 
obey your precepts you are my portion Lord I have promised to obey your words I have sought your grace with all my heart but be gracious to me according to your promise I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands though the wicked bind me with ropes I will not forget your law at midnight I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws I am a friend to all who fear you to all who follow your precepts the earth is filled with your love Lord teach me your decrees do good to your servant according to your word Lord teach me knowledge and good judgment for I trust your commands before I was afflicted I went astray but now I obey your word you are good and what you do is good teach me your decrees though the arrogant have smeared me with lies I keep your precepts with all my heart their hearts are callous and unfeeling but I delight in your law it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees the law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold your hands made me and formed me give me understanding to learn your commands may those who fear you rejoice when they see me for I have put my hope in your word I know Lord that your laws are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me may your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant let your compassion come to me that I may live for your law is my delight may the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause but I will meditate on your precepts may those who fear you turn to me those who understand your statutes may I wholeheartedly follow your decrees that I may not be put to shame my soul faints with longing for your salvation but I have put my hope in your word my eyes fail looking for your promise I say when will you comfort me though I am like a wine skin in the smoke I do not forget your decrees how long must your servant wait when will you punish my persecutors the arrogant dig pits to trap me contrary to your law all your commands are trustworthy help me for I am being persecuted without cause they almost wiped me from the earth but I have not forsaken your precepts in your unfailing love preserve my life that I may obey the statutes of your mouth your word Lord is eternal it stands firm in the heavens your faithfulness continues through all generations you established the earth and it endures your laws endure to this day for all things serve you if your law had not been my delight I would have perished in my affliction I will never forget your precepts for by them you have preserved my life save me for I am yours I have sought out your precepts the wicked are waiting to destroy me 
but I will ponder your statutes to all perfection I see a limit but your commands are boundless oh how I love your law I meditate on it all day long your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word I have departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth I gain understanding from your precepts therefore I hate every wrong path your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws I have suffered much preserve my life Lord according to your word accept Lord the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws though I constantly take my life in my hands I will not forget your law the wicked have set a snare for me but I have not strayed from your precepts your statutes are my heritage forever they are the joy of my heart my heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end I hate double-minded people but I love your law you are my refuge and my shield I have put my hope in your word away from me you evildoers that I may keep the commands of my God sustain me my God according to your promise and I will live do not let my hopes be dashed uphold me and I will be delivered I will always have regard for your decrees you reject all who stray from your decrees for their delusions come to nothing all the wicked of the earth you discard like dross therefore I love your statutes my flesh trembles in fear of you I stand in awe of your laws I have done what is righteous and just do not leave me to my oppressors ensure your servants well-being do not let the arrogant oppress me my eyes fail looking for your salvation looking for your righteous promise deal with your servant according to your love and teach me your decrees I am your servant give me discernment that I may understand your statutes it is time for you to act Lord your law is being broken because I love your commands more than gold more than pure gold and because I consider all your precepts right I hate every wrong path your statutes are wonderful therefore I obey them the unfolding of your words gives light it gives understanding to the simple I open my mouth and pant longing for your commands turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name direct my footsteps according to your word let no sin rule over me redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees 
streams of tears flow from my eyes for your law is not obeyed you are righteous Lord and your laws are right the statutes you have laid down are righteous they are fully trustworthy my zeal wears me out for my enemies ignore your words your promises have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them though I am lowly and despised I do not forget your precepts your righteousness is everlasting and your law is true trouble and distress have come upon me but your commands give me delight your statutes are always righteous give me understanding that I may live I call you with all my heart answer me Lord and I will obey your decrees I call out to you save me and I will keep your statutes I rise before dawn and cry for help I have put my hope in your word my eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises hear my voice in accordance with your love preserve my life Lord according to your laws those who devise wicked schemes are near but they are far from your law yet you are near Lord and all your commands are true long ago I learned from your statutes that you established them to last forever look on my suffering and deliver me for I have not forgotten your law defend my cause and redeem me preserve my life according to your promise salvation is far from the wicked and they do not seek out your decrees your compassion Lord is great preserve my life according to your laws many are the foes who persecute me but I have not turned from your statutes I look on the faithless with loathing for they do not obey your word see how I love your precepts preserve my life Lord in accordance with your love all your words are true all your righteous laws are eternal rulers persecute me without cause but my heart trembles at your word I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil I hate and detest falsehood but I love your law seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble I wait for your salvation Lord and I follow your commands I obey your statutes for I love them greatly I obey your precepts and your statutes for all my ways are known to you may my cry come before you Lord give me understanding according to your word may my supplication come before you deliver me according to your promise may my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decrees may my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous may your hand be ready to help me for I have chosen your precepts I long for your salvation Lord and your law gives me delight let me live that I may praise you and may your laws sustain me I have strayed like a lost sheep seek your servant for I have not forgotten your commands
In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we hear the words of Moses, the words of a song that he shared at the end of his life, with the entire assembly of Israel in attendance. Listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Let the words of this song, the song of Moses, fall like rain on your spirit tonight. Breathe deeply in and out. Relax, find peace, and be still before the Lord. Gracious God, thank you for giving us your word and for allowing us to hear the words of your servant Moses. As we rest in your presence, Lord, help us to let go of any distracting thoughts. Instead, fill us with peaceful thoughts that descend like dew on the fertile ground of our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Moses continued his song in the assembly of the people. The very people he had led through the dry and barren desert, Moses gave these words. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect. And all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong upright and just is he a faithful God who does no wrong upright and just is he find peace in the greatness of God who does no wrong Moses proclaimed God as the rock. There is shelter in the rock of your salvation. He covers you with his righteous right hand. He guards you from the storm. He protects you from strong winds. He shields you from the elements. Find great comfort in God, the rock of your salvation. In Psalm 65, we hear beautiful words of God's provision for the dry and thirsty soul. The psalmist says, You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have adorned it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain they shout for joy and sing it is the Lord who cares for the land he waters it he enriches it he softens the dry and thirsty ground with showers of rain breathe deeply of God's caring provision tonight 
hear the flowing streams of water the streams of God flowing through the desert of our souls providing what is needed for every season he is the one who has ordained the rains to fall and soften the ground so that the crops can grow the earth depends on him and we are reminded of God's sovereignty from Isaiah my hand laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens when I call to them they stand forth together breathe deeply of God's sovereignty and know that he is God sovereign God full of mercy and blessing thank you for sending the rain in due season you are the giver of all good things we praise you for giving us such abundance in every season Lord you provide exactly what is needed and we thank you by covering of your spirit we ask for perfect peace tonight we settle our minds on you and breathe deeply of your presence thank you Lord for watching over us and guarding us as we sleep all praise and glory and honor be to your son Jesus amen listen you heavens and I will speak hear you earth the words of my mouth let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew like showers on new grass like abundant rain on tender plants hear the words of Moses again like falling rain abundant rain for your tender heart feel the soft covers around you the pillow beneath your head and know that God is with you the abundance of his presence fills the room the gentle whisper of his voice soothes your heart and mind you have nothing to fear there is great comfort in his love and provision rest securely in the comfort of the Lord as you rest peacefully tonight you are being renewed and refreshed like a garden of tender plants carefully cultivated to grow and produce a harvest your spirit is being cultivated by God's Spirit tenderly he prunes away the dry leaves the leaves that are not healthy then he feeds the roots giving them strength to go deeper allow the Lord to strengthen you in the inmost place it is the Lord who provides sunshine to brighten your weary frame he sends the moisture of rain in due season he cares for you hear the words of the psalmist once more the grasslands of the wilderness overflow the hills are clothed with gladness the meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain they shout for joy and sing breathe in the sweet fragrance of flowering meadows and valleys filled with grain the wonderful abundance of the Lord
Heavenly Father, I pray over your beloved child tonight that your presence will produce a harvest of righteousness in their life. As you clothe the hills with gladness, I ask that you clothe your beloved with inexpressible joy. As the meadows are filled with flocks grazing on your goodness, I pray this child will be filled with the abundance of all good things. And as the valleys are mantled with grain shouting for joy and singing your praise, I pray for renewal in the heart of this precious soul. Create in them a heart of praise, O Lord, and comfort them tonight with your perfect peace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Breathe in a steady rhythm. Rest in quiet comfort. Remain in God's presence. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior. The hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas who formed the mountains by your power. Having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves in the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. God answers. Through awesome and righteous deeds, He answers us. He is our God, our Savior, our hope to the ends of the earth. The whole earth is filled with awe at His wonders. Where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Hear songs of joy, songs of gladness, songs of peace. Heavenly Father, please cover your beloved with the cloak of your peace. Through every hour of the night, calm them in your steadfast love. Please allow deep sleep to consume them without a single worry or care. Steady their breathing in you, a constant, steadfast rhythm of peace. Thank you for showering them with blessing. Thank you for filling their hearts with songs of gladness, joy, and comfort. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Falling rain on the windowsill, gentle and comforting, like the words of the Lord descending on dry and thirsty souls, drawing them nearer than before. Falling rain on the parched ground soaking it in without hesitation like the parched spirit searching for living water a well that will never run dry falling rain rain of God fall on your beloved one tonight drench them with your love your peace your goodness Lord God, full of care and compassion, please care for this child tonight. In your faithful provision, please take care of their every need. Remove everything that concerns them, Lord. Let your streams of water flow over them, streams of peace. 
provide what their soul longs for most righteousness and Christ ordain in them your will your good pleasing and perfect will and please soften their hearts to receive your blessings I pray these things in the name of your son Jesus you care for the land and water it you enrich it abundantly the streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain for so you have adorned it you drench its furrows and level its ridges you soften it with showers and bless its crops you crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance the grasslands and the wilderness overflow the hills are clothed with gladness the meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain they shout for joy and sing there is no one like our God who cares for us so abundantly breathe deeply of God's compassion tonight compassion and peace like falling rain on a dry and thirsty soul gracious God full of compassion rain down your peace tonight as this child sleeps deeply within the fold of your loving arms I pray for them to be renewed by the falling rain of your love and provision continue to guard them through the night covering them with the sweetness of your presence in Jesus precious name I pray amen relax in the peace of God as I say a prayer over you tonight Heavenly Father please cover your beloved one as they find true rest in you please help them know that you are with them please cover them with your love and your goodness as a soft blanket envelop them in the comfort of your peace in the name of Jesus I pray amen now as I share the beautiful reminders from Scripture the reminders of God's goodness sink your head deeper into your pillow and completely relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale It was the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts who reminded the people of Lystra that God's goodness could always be counted on he encouraged them to turn away from worthless things things that could not be counted on and turn to the Living God now Lystra was an ancient village built upon a modest hill rising from the surrounding plains of Asia Minor with the grandeur of mountains to the west and to the south this Roman colony was mentioned as the hometown of Timothy one of the young men Paul mentored in his faith Paul visited Lystra on more than one occasion preaching the gospel and healing a man who had been lame from birth 
on one of his visits Paul encouraged the believers of Lystra that even though the Lord had allowed the nations to walk in their own ways he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness God never left them even through trial and hardship the evidence of his goodness was all around them what an encouragement the evidence of God's goodness surrounds us as well it is seen in the illustrations of nature as each new day is yet another portrait of God's exquisite artistry from blue ocean tides and sandy beaches to flowering meadows and lush green forests God's goodness is evident to all be assured of God's goodness of his presence in your life no matter what is going on in the world the Lord is with you every step of the way allow that thought to surround you with peace tonight breathe softly in and out As Paul continued to encourage the believers in Lystra with the beautiful testimony of the Lord he pointed out that it is God who sends the rain provides good crops and gives joyful hearts to his beloved God sends the rain hear it falling gently from the clouds to water the earth like small pebbles hitting the ground in a cadence of rhythmic wonder sometimes the raindrops fall so softly they can barely be heard other times sheets of rain come in waves and torrents cascading down like a waterfall from heaven yet each drop fulfills its purpose offering much needed moisture to the dry and thirsty ground the earth drinks in the rain and silently begs for more let the showers of God's goodness fall gently on your soul tonight drink in the sweetness of his presence inhale and exhale not only does the Lord water the ground he cultivates the earth causing good crops to burst forth and grow as sustenance for his people in various places fields of grain spread out like quilts across the landscape some of the fields are circular some are square and some are shaped like pieces of a puzzle 
Each crop provides what is needed for that region. As you gaze upon the fields from above, you see that some are deep green like emeralds dotting the landscape. These include clover, parsley, and fennel. Other crops appear like vast treasures of pure gold. They sway in the wind, waving their greeting to the passerby. Wheat, corn, oats, and rye. Fields of grain. Sustenance. Good and perfect gifts from our Father in heaven. Bask in the abundant blessings of the Lord tonight. Continue to breathe gently in and out in steady rhythm, allowing your body to fully relax. Inhale and exhale as I pray over you. Good and gracious Lord, thank you for your presence tonight. You are good. You are holy. I thank you for this listener who has invited your spirit to cover them as they sleep. Please help them rest deeply in your goodness, knowing that you are with them. Bless them, Lord, with peace. In the precious name of your Son, I pray. Sense the soothing, calming presence of the Lord tonight. Breathe in his goodness. Breathe out all your cares. He is with you. Paul finished his message to the people in Lystra by reminding them that God is the giver of joyful hearts. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with joy tonight. It is His good and perfect gift to you. He has joy in abundance. It is a fruit that never fails to be produced in the heart that fully trusts in Him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Taste and see. The Lord is good. Trust in Him and be blessed. You can trust in the goodness of God. Breathe softly in and out. Allow the comfort of the Holy Spirit to wash over you. He gives you the deepest sense of peace, not as the world gives, but deeper peace than anything you've ever known. In the book of Exodus, we read that the Lord God is merciful and gracious, long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Let those truths seek deep into your heart. 
he is merciful he is gracious he is patient he is full of truth and he is so so good rest in these beautiful descriptions of God tonight as you gaze into the heavens on a starry night there is no doubt that the glory of the Lord fills every bit of space unwavering unchanging for every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows every good and perfect gift comes from the father let that promise reassure your heart tonight the father of the heavenly lights does not change like shifting shadows as the hymnist said there is no shadow of turning with thee hear the soft melody of those words there is no shadow of turning with thee remain in the comfort of God's unfailing love stay in the presence of his spirit rest in the silence for several moments God does not change he remains steadfast and true to his word you can rely on him you can trust in his goodness for every good and perfect gift comes from the father slow your breathing in and out softly gently deeply God is so good to us I am reminded of the simple chorus God is so good God is so good God is so good he's so good to me the evidence of his goodness is all around you it envelops you like a soft cloud of comfort sink deeper under the covers relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale as I pray over you most merciful God full of grace I pray over your beloved child tonight I ask that you blanket them with peace as they rest securely in you help them settle into the deepest of sleep so that they will awaken refreshed and restored thank you good good father for being with them tonight in Jesus name amen in Proverbs 324 it says 
when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet and in Psalm 3 5 the psalmist writes I lie down and sleep I wake again because the Lord sustains me so as you lay your weary body under the sheet and blanket allow yourself to sink into the bed and allow the pillow to carry the weight of your head feeling your bed carry the weight of your body like plants need water to survive your body and mind needs rest to renew itself close your eyes breathe in peaceful thoughts exhale worry and anxiety stretch your feet and toes relieving tight muscles slowly rotating your ankles feel the sense of relief in your tired feet that have carried you to and fro throughout the day relax now Heavenly Father how I thank you for bringing me safely to the end of the day and I praise and thank you for your loving kindness and great goodness to me today thank you for the many blessings and provisions that you bestowed on me for keeping me safe and guiding me and bringing me once again to that time of day when I can recharge my spirit and soul with a refreshing night's sleep forgive me I pray if I have said or done anything that was not honoring to your name or have sought to do things in my own strength rather than relying totally on you for I praise you that your grace is sufficient for your strength is perfected in my weakness and now Lord as I lie down I pray that you would watch over me to protect and keep me safe give me a deep and refreshing sleep and may I cast any burdens or difficulties on you and not allow my mind to fret or worry for you have promised to carry all my burdens if I will just give them to you protect those I love and father draw those who are far from you close to your embrace I thank you that my life is safe in your arms this I pray in Jesus name amen with your eyes closed our journey tonight takes us to a beautiful forest the pine trees tower above your head the lingering rays of sunlight fade as the evening darkness takes over the light of day through the haze of the dusk sky you see a cabin in the distance a candle flickers through the windows it seems strange that this cabin would be in such a secluded place but you are tired could this be my place of rest for the evening you ask yourself 
As you approach the inviting, quaint cabin in the woods, you notice the door is slightly open. A crooked sign hanging on an old rusty nail reads, Come in. Make yourself at home. Even though the sign says you are welcome, you hesitate but you slowly push open the worn wooden door to peek in. As you look into the cabin, Jesus says, Come in, my child, he says. I've been waiting for you. He looks at you and says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat he says to you come with me to a quiet place and get some rest in the corner of the cabin you notice a bed made of willow wood and two fluffy pillows leaning against the headboard crafted of bent willow branches. As Jesus in a rocking chair next to the warmth of a fire, he says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. You begin to drift off to sleep under the watchful eye of Jesus the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. Jesus repeats those words as found in John 15, 56. Remember, my child, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. The fruit that Jesus speaks of is simply evidence of your relationship with him. Fast asleep now, in this little cabin in the woods, you realize you've not known this place of peace before. You become more comfortable in your bed as the candle flickers across the room. Jesus continues to pray for you as he sits in his handmade rocking chair. As you drift further into a land of dreams, do you see the vineyard just outside the cabin? You hadn't noticed it on your journey to the cabin, as there is a thick wall of darkness. But now you see miles and miles of grapevines each plant is loaded with grapes. Imagine the growth you see in your life as the fullness of Christ's resurrection fuels and nurtures such growth. Imagine the fruitfulness that you would like to see and know that God supports you in pursuing it. Jesus continues to watch over you as you drift into a deep sleep. 
abide in Jesus now rest in God's grace the rhythm of your breathing gets deeper and deeper abide in him and he will abide in you as Philippians 1 6 says he who began a good work in you will complete it father as I come to the end of another very busy day I praise and thank you for the gift of sleep and the wonderful way that the nighttime hours seem to sweep away all my cares and melt away all my worries as I rest in you thank you that I may confidently cast all our cares and concerns upon you and lay all of our burdens down at your feet knowing that you love me with a perfect love and care for me with fatherly concern keep me safe this night from any perils and dangers enlighten the darkness of this night with your perfect peace your gracious tranquility and your serene grace protect me through the hours of darkness thank you that you are my shield and protection my rock of salvation and my hope and strength hold me close Lord Jesus I pray that I may sleep securely knowing that you are by my bed every moment of the night thank you that moment by moment I am kept in your love amen rest in the truth of God's Word as you abide in Christ remember Proverbs 3 24 when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet continue to sleep knowing abide in him and Jesus will abide in you Paul sat down to write to Timothy a young man that he thought of as a son Timothy had been faithful to Paul even staying with him when in prison having a mother and grandmother who believed in the one true God Timothy now pastored the church that Paul had helped establish in Ephesus as he dipped the pen into the inkwell and thought of what he wanted to say to Timothy Paul thought back to the time they spent together in Ephesus there were already a few believers there as well as a Jewish community but the culture was mostly enmeshed in the worship of Greek and Roman gods picture what it would be like for a young man to travel to new places with the Apostle Paul as he persuaded people to believe for the first time the farmland surrounding Ephesus was rich its rolling hills were full of vineyards rich grazing pastures of sheep and goats and fields of wheat Paul was pleased 
when he was able to taste of the ripe olives, sweet figs, and large dates. Paul recalled how he and Timothy got to know and understand the Ephesians. Although Timothy was young, he followed Paul's lead and rose to leadership easily. Paul chuckled as he thought back to how this young man learned to eat different foods in Ephesus. The local people made a sour dish out of milk that had been thickened and then sweetened with honey. Paul had enjoyed the contrasting flavors and thought it one of the better things he'd eaten. But Timothy wasn't so sure. In Paul's experience, young men were happy with familiar meat and bread. He smiled again as he thought of Timothy's face puckering at the sour yogurt. (laughs) Feel free to smile too as you imagine his expression. Paul thought about the many advantages of living in Ephesus. It was a wealthy city, so the agriculture there was unique and sometimes beautiful. He remembered admiring the terrace houses, built on a slope using massive stone walls. They were almost palaces with three stories and large courtyards paved with marble. Those houses even had running water. The artwork on them was remarkable. They often featured gladiators or animals drawn so skillfully they looked real. Picture what it would be like for the average person to see these remarkable homes at a time when most people's dwellings were humble. What made Ephesus such a wealthy city was its port of trade. This also brought many people into Ephesus, which Paul saw as an opportunity for them to hear about Jesus Christ. It was as if the world was coming to him. It also meant that those who believed would carry the message with them as they visited other places in the region. Ephesus was a center of education. The Odium could seat more than 1,000 people. Public lectures were given there, often to a packed crowd. Many in Ephesus were happy to learn of anything new which gave Paul and Timothy many opportunities to explain the gospel. Explaining Jesus to those who had never heard of him was a great joy. The most important building in Ephesus was the temple to Artemis. This grand columned temple was considered one of the seven wonders of the world. Paul had to admit, it was an amazing building huge with gleaming white stones it made him sad to know that such a grand structure was built to worship a false god but it reminded him constantly of why he and timothy were there he knew timothy would talk to those who visited the temple of artemis on a regular basis he would have to refute those who scoffed at his own beliefs and he would need to cling to truth in a culture that didn't understand that truth. Breathe a prayer of thanks that you are privileged to know the truth of Christ. Paul thought more seriously about what he wanted to say to Timothy. He had already written quite a bit of practical information to him but he wanted to close his letter with something that would truly encourage his young friend. He knew that ministering could be lonely and difficult, especially in a culture that didn't understand his message. But he wanted to make sure Timothy stood firm in spite of that. 
He also knew that because Ephesus was so wealthy, it could easily lead Timothy astray. So Paul reminded Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, Timothy, are a man of God, so run from all these evil things. Let all money worries drift away from you now. Pursue righteousness in a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. After writing that sentence, Paul thought about it for a long time. He wanted Timothy to understand that to live a life full of the Holy Spirit, he had to be intentional about it. It was something to pursue. He couldn't just wait for it to come to him. He knew that if Timothy pursued righteousness and godliness, his life would blossom in faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Paul carefully wrote more to encourage Timothy, fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. He prayed Timothy would do this. He prayed that as Timothy considered the everlasting life God offered him, that his own worries and concerns would fade. Now, let your worries also fade. Paul continued, And I charge you before God, who gives life to all, and before Christ Jesus, who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate, that you obey this command without wavering. Paul wanted Timothy to remember that it is God who gives life. He is the only one who can sustain us through all of life's troubles. He also wanted to remind him that Jesus Christ's testimony is true and trustworthy. Such confidence in him would keep Timothy from wavering in his faith. Thank God for how he has sustained you and given you life. Then no one can find fault with you from now until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Paul knew that some were upset that he'd left Timothy in charge since he was such a young man. He wanted Timothy to know that he had confidence in him that if he let the Holy Spirit help him, his critics would have nothing to say against him. Paul dipped his pen in the ink again and rubbed at a smudge that splashed onto his hand. The more he rubbed, the bigger the spot grew. He finally left it alone, certain it would wear off in time. He looked again at the last sentence he had written about the Lord Jesus Christ coming again. The thought excited him and made him feel like bursting into a song. The hope of Christ's return to earth makes all other concerns dim. Full of joy, Paul wrote, At just the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only Almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of all lords. Paul thought, None can compare to God and His power. 
no king or lord could come close Paul had never seen a king but he had seen a few lords men who were powerful landowners and men who had no one telling them what to do he knew such men felt invincible but he also knew that they could be easily toppled as a tower of child's blocks Paul hoped Timothy would be able to dwell on God's power so that it would put all his concerns in their proper place knowing God is King of all Kings and Lord of all Lords puts all our concerns in their place Paul wanted to turn these thoughts into a prayer of praise so he wrote he alone can never die and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him no human eye has ever seen him nor ever will all honor and power to him forever amen he hoped that the dark things Timothy experienced would fade away in this brilliant light let any dark thoughts you have fade in this way too illuminated by God's dazzling light let the dark drift away into only goodness and light now to the God eternal immortal invisible the only God be honor and glory forever and ever amazing God and Father we rest in the fact that although you are invisible you are present with us thank you that we can trust you with every detail of our lives amen even though it's night and dark bask in the light that never goes out know that this eternal God watches over you as you sleep be confident that he will not abandon you for a moment and rest well tonight our scripture focus will be on the glorious words of praise from Psalm chapter 8 this Psalm of David might best be described as a song of God's glory displayed throughout the heavens about this chapter Charles Spurgeon once said let us go abroad and sing it beneath the starry heavens at eventide rest in that poetic phrase for a moment beneath the starry heavens at eventide inhale and exhale relax every muscle feel the tension just leave your body as you turn your thoughts to the glory of the Lord tonight in a moment you will hear the words of David as he offered a beautiful tribute to the God of all creation and to the glory of the Lord seated high above the heavens but before we visit this psalm of praise please join me as I pray Holy Father your glory rises far above the heavens so vast so boundless we just can't comprehend it yet by the works of your hands you give us glimpses into your magnificent glory and for that we're so thankful tonight Lord open our ears to hear the wonderful words of praise from the mouth of David 
join our hearts with yours as we meditate upon your glory for our own good help us to release all distracting thoughts and just focus only on you and your perfect word settle us Lord in the goodness of your presence and I pray these things in the beautiful name of Jesus amen and now hear the words of David O Lord our Lord how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of our enemies that you may silence the enemy and the Avenger when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him what is man that you are mindful of him how is it possible that the creator of the universe has time to be mindful of us surely he he has better things to think about and yet God's thoughts over us are thoughts of love and acceptance after all not only did his hands set the moon and stars in place but his hands fashioned each of us in his own likeness dear one the Lord is mindful of you tonight think about that he knows you he thinks about you he loves you let those thoughts bring you comfort and peace what is the son of man that you care for him oh how God cares for you he cares about the smallest details regarding your life feel that feel his nurturing presence watching over you as you fall asleep you are his beloved child and you are held in his loving hands there's no doubt that he is with you for the scriptures declare that he is Emmanuel God with us feel the presence of God Emmanuel with you tonight the Lord has set his glory above the heavens he has set the moon and stars in place for centuries man has tried to figure it all out they have endlessly searched for answers about the universe the heavens have been a puzzled wonder to mankind but know this God has it all figured out nothing is a puzzle to him he has put all the right pieces together in just the right way beyond our scope of understanding he designed the universe the heavens the earth and our lives for his glory and our good one 19th century astronomer once wrote what have we to tell of all the different varieties of stars what of those most supremely glorious objects 
what of the Milky Way such are a few of the questions which occur when we ponder on the mysteries of the heavens the mysteries of the heavens are no mystery to their Creator for he has set his glory above the heavens rest under the heavens that God has put into place as a vast covering of starlit wonder and glory Lord God please bless this beloved one who is resting in the glory of your presence tonight bless them with peace hope and trust in you settle their breathing into a soft rhythm helping them sink into a deep peaceful sleep Lord as they rest quietly I ask that you allow them to dream of the beautiful works of your hands the works of your fingers that set the moon and stars in place the works of your magnificent glory found high above the heavens in the name of Jesus I pray amen on each of the historical flights of the space shuttle discovery the crew was awakened each morning by song these wake-up calls were a tradition of the NASA program and the songs were selected by mission control one Sunday morning during orbit John Glenn and the rest of the crew woke up to a song called hallelujahs a song that speaks of cratered moon and sparrows wings oh thunders booms and Saturn's rings unveil our father as you sing and my soul wells up with hallelujahs the writer of the song Chris Rice was overwhelmed by the thought of his humble song being played for the astronauts in space as they hovered far above the earth with a miraculous view of God's handiwork they were filled with a song of worship to the maker of the universe and my soul wells up with hallelujahs holy God maker of all that is seen and unseen our souls well up with hallelujahs praise and honor of who you are thank you Lord for creating the heavens in such a vast array underneath the starry sky we rest in the holiness of your presence we dream of the works of your hands in all your glory and goodness amen when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him in the son of man that you care for him yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor you have given him dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor 
rest humbly in the place that God has established for you a little lower than the angels and crowned with glory and honor I praise you for setting everything in its place just so perfectly underneath the blanket of the starry heavens you have assigned us our proper place tonight Lord I pray over this dear child for rest and peace in your presence I ask that your glory will continue to shine in their life for their ultimate good as the earth continues to spin on its axis and make its orbit around the Sun I pray that the life of this listener right here will continue to flow under the mighty direction of your hand thank you Lord that you are mindful of us that you care about us and that you love us in the holy name of Jesus amen Oh Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth you have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouths of babies and infants you have established strength how majestic is your name your glory above the heavens you have established strength feel God's majesty and glory and strength covering you tonight out of the mouths of babies and infants you have established strength sweet praise from the mouths of babes worshiping the one who saves from sky above to earth below the works of your hands we long to know heavens declare the strength of your glory we long to hear of heaven's story from first breath of all creation through each blessed generation how can your glory be understood your perfect glory for our good Heavenly Father Father of glory and goodness remain over this beloved child tonight as they sleep in peace help them to get enough rest to feel renewed at morning light and to awaken with a sense of refreshment thank you Lord for being that constant in their life a constant source of hope in faith I pray for the blessing of your presence to stay with them through the night and continue as they face a new day I pray all these things in the precious name of your son Jesus amen God speaks the words for you tonight that he spoke to Moses I will be with you he wants these words to burn bright and clear before you like the fire that burned before Moses he wants his words to break through your darkness to penetrate deep into your inner being to grow in you confidence and love God is a blazing fire of goodness warmth and hope yet it is often difficult for us to see him and to hear his faithful words I will be with you 
these were words that Moses had trouble hearing and trusting too his life before the burning bush had been strange and messy nothing about his life made it obvious that God would choose him to lead his people out of slavery to freedom he was the baby sent down the river in a basket a Hebrew raised in the palace of the Egyptian king Moses was a murderer who hid in the desert if there had been a job opening for hero of the Israelites Moses would not have had a strong resume to our minds Moses was an unlikely leader yet God blesses he embraces he uses unlikely people Moses doubted himself he doubted God too he was lost in the desert in the despair of his terrible mistakes and even still God says to him Moses I will be with you and God will be with you too God is with you your life doesn't need to make sense to you or to others your life can be messy and strange and even still God says to you I will be with you allow these words deeper into your heart and mind I will be with you rehearse this good news in your breath allow the burning fire of God's voice to shine into your darkness by breathing in and saying to your soul God is with me and then also breathing out pray meditate and trust saying again God is with me when I say Moses's life was strange and messy I mean that his life did not move in a nice clear clean straight line his life's journey had many twists and turns many layers of confusion and suffering his mother took a papyrus basket and covered it with tar and pitch so that it would float she placed Moses as a baby inside and set the basket among the reeds of the Nile a wide long river his mother didn't know where the basket would be found she sent her daughter to follow it as it floated away it was the Egyptian King's daughter who drew him out of the water the Egyptian King the Pharaoh had ordered that all Hebrew baby boys were to be thrown into the Nile and it was Pharaoh's daughter who drew him out of the water that is what Moses's name means drew him out of the water how have you been cast into the waters left to drown how have you been lost among the reeds caught in the perilous current of life how have you been abandoned thrust out of the safety of home Jesus says to you I will be with you I have been with you I will not leave you alone you are named Moses too you are the one I draw out of the water 
I will draw you out of the pit out of the miry clay and set your feet upon a rock you have been in the current of today's dangerous rapid waters call out to God for help allow him to draw you up from the soul numbing currents of busyness rush and self-dependence as you allow yourself to go to sleep give yourself to God's care become God dependent in this story of Moses we have a foreshadowing of what we gain in the waters of baptism the waters that are meant for death turn out to be instead cleansing healing waters yes our enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour yes like the Egyptian king our enemy wants to drown you he wants you to be covered by the dangerous waters of life yet through this danger through these very same waters Jesus meets you he reaches out to rescue you he draws you out of death into new life allow these waters to wash you ending a day giving yourself to sleep resting in God's love this is sacred holy precious as you are being washed you are more and more free to be near God to enjoy his presence to trust in his watchful care rest sleep believe allowing these words deeper into your heart and mind I will be with you see the burning bush of God's presence speaking goodness into your heart rehearse this good news in your breath breathing in saying to your soul you are with me and then also breathing out pray meditate and trust saying again you are with me Moses's life had been strange messy and confusing when he came of age he began to sort out the things that mattered most to his life he understood in deeper ways that he was an alien and a stranger in the house of Pharaoh he was a Hebrew one of the oppressed benefiting from the riches of the oppressor was troubling how could he enjoy any good thing when his own people were enslaved working tirelessly for the brutal king of Egypt when he saw an Egyptian beating one of his Hebrew brothers one day he was given a chance to prove his identity as an Israelite in a fit of rage and vindication he killed the Egyptian hid the body in the sand and then fled into the desert to hide from Pharaoh's wrath years later Moses had married raised a family and was working for his father-in-law Jethro tending sheep on the backside of Mount Horeb Moses was no doubt content to be removed 
and hidden from his previous life as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had no expectation that God had any special plans for his life. He had no idea that his life was about to change. There on the backside of Mount Horeb, this was a wilderness place where God spoke to Moses in a burning bush. You likely have not experienced a literal burning bush, but you have had some kind of burning bush experience. This would be that turning point when you came to accept the truth of God in a way that changed the direction of your life. This would be a moment when he especially revealed himself through a person, an experience, maybe a worship service, a time when you were serving someone, perhaps a time of prayer, or even a powerful sermon. Something shifted inside of you, and you haven't been the same since. You might protest here, but I haven't taken God as seriously as I should. My life hasn't changed that much. I still struggle. I still don't know how to trust God with my life. I continue to resist Him each day. I live more through my strength than God's love. Moses protested too. He said, Who am I that you would speak to me? He worried about his weaknesses. I can't speak for you. I stutter when I open my mouth. Moses would drift away from God too. He would become impatient and angry with the people he was leading. He would continue to struggle with fear and doubt. Even still, God says to Moses, I will be with you. And God still says to you, I will be with you. No matter how much doubt or fear that stir inside of you, God still says, I will be with you. No matter how much stubbornness and anger, God still says, I will be with you. Once again, place yourself before the burning bush of God's presence. Rest. Sleep. Believe these words deeper into your heart and mind. I will be with you. Rehearse this good news in your breath. Breathing in, saying to your soul, My God is with me. And then also breathing out, pray, meditate, and trust, saying again, My God is with me. As we bring this meditation to a close, I invite you to consider one more part of Moses' story. God instructs Moses to say to Pharaoh, Let my people go. Moses fusses. But how can I go back? How can I speak for you? Why would the king of Egypt listen to me? God replies, Tell Pharaoh that I am sent you. I am. The great I am is with you. The great I am sends you. He is the true, true. He is the real, real. God is being behind and before all other things. 
he is the one by whom everything else in the universe was created he is the one in whom all things hold together and have their being the great I am says to you tonight I am with you I am the being who will always be with you in peace give yourself to sleep rest in God's faithfulness for he alone can make you dwell in safety may the Lord bless you and protect you as you sleep may his face shine upon you like the radiance of a burning bush may he be gracious and kind granting you deep healing sleep may you be filled with peace continue to allow yourself to let go of today by rehearsing in your breathing in and breathing out my God is with me my God is with me my God is with me amen the Apostle Paul knew firsthand just how powerful the love of Christ was for much of his life he found himself on the opposite side of grace he didn't affirm Jesus as the Messiah and opposed anyone who did for years and years he positioned himself against the followers of Jesus but then one day everything changed no matter what your background is you can find hope in God you can be restored as a beloved child of God and spend all the rest of your days living in the reality that you are loved you are loved by God Paul went on to write a number of letters to various groups of people who belong to the family of God in one of those letters he gives a reminder of God's great love Romans 8 35 and 37 through 39 in the New Living Translation says can anyone ever separate us from Christ's love does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death no despite all these things overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love no power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord God's love for you is irrevocably confirmed you could search the world from top to bottom and you would never find a single thing that could separate you from the love of God but sometimes it might feel like his love has left you you might feel like you've been left right now you might be desperate 
for a reminder that God's love will never fail imagine that you decided to go looking for evidence that God's love had left you like an explorer from days of old you pack up for an expedition surely God's love isn't always there you think so you grab a backpack from the closet and pat it down a few times to remove the dust it smells musty after months untouched in the back of the closet unzip it to fill it with the necessities for a long trip you grab a compass from the shelf and put it in the bag next you add a map a water bottle snacks and a jacket grab a notebook and pen to keep track of the things you come across lace up your boots and prepare for the long journey ahead of you you head out the door and instantly feel the heat on your face the warmth of the summer sun beats down on you but the promise that God's love is always there no matter what just seems too good to be true so this is a journey you must take you have to find out if the words of the Apostle Paul that nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God is really true so off you go you pull the map out of your musty backpack to see what your first stop will be when you unfold your map you find that your path has already been traced out you identify your spot on the map and find your first stop is trouble and calamity as you walk toward trouble and calamity you remember the struggles you encountered and the pain you endured did that mean God's love had run out but as you pass trouble and calamity looking at the various moments held here remember the ways that God was present in your pain despite all this overwhelming victory was ours through Christ who loves you his love hadn't left he was faithful even then you are loved by God as you leave trouble and calamity continue your journey under the bright hot Sun you feel the exhaustion as you walk but you find the resolve to continue as you look to the map you see the next stop is persecution was it here that God's love ran out you wonder as you continue walking was it in the midst of hostility or ill treatment that you were separated from God's love though the pain of words spoken by those persecutors stung you remember the way God's love brought you comfort in the midst of the hurt despite all this overwhelming victory was yours through Christ who loves you his love hadn't left he was faithful even then you are loved by God sweat drips down your forehead and your feet ache from the journey as you continue to walk you notice a breeze that begins to stir shaking the leaves of the trees that line that street 
you notice the petals of the trees blowing off and falling to the ground. The breeze is a welcome reprieve, but as you look to the sky, notice the dark clouds moving in. Unable to turn back, you carry on. You pull the map out yet again and find the next stop is hunger and destitution. You shove the map back into your pack, questioning why you began this journey in the first place. And just as you begin to wonder if it was here that God's love left you, you feel a raindrop on your face. One drop quickly turns to many, and you're now walking through the rain. As the rain falls, you remember the stress and strain during a season of hunger and destitution. Had God's love left you then? Is that why you struggled? Despite the struggle, you remember the ways in which God provided. He was near to you in the midst of your loss. Despite all this, overwhelming victory was yours through Christ, who loves you. His love hadn't left. He was faithful even then. You are loved by God. Your final stop is further down the way. You walk the winding paths in the fading rain, wondering if it's here that you will learn that God's love had left. Your final stop is danger and death. You remember the moments where fear or anxiety were present and your suffering felt overwhelming. Yet even in the midst of danger and the threat of death, you remember the nearness of God. Despite all this, overwhelming victory was yours through Christ, who loves you. His love hadn't left. He was faithful even then. You are loved by God. Tucking the map away in your pack, turn back toward home. Through it all, you are reminded of God's kindness and grace. You have seen his faithfulness and feel the depth of his love. Convinced that nothing could ever separate you from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither your fears for today, nor your worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate you from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. His love hasn't left. He was faithful even in the pain. You are loved by God. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved by God. May you rest tonight, convinced that nothing can ever separate you from God's love. No matter where your journey takes you, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
may God bless you as you sleep may you be filled with the comfort of his love and as it says in 2nd Corinthians 13 13 may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all amen rest well in the presence of God tonight as you sleep remembering as you dream that you are deeply loved by God tonight our sleep story takes us through the great smoky mountains in the beautiful state of Tennessee down the old state highway through winding country roads we come to an historic covered bridge tucked away between lush towering trees hear the rustling sound of leaves as the mountain air flows through the treetops inhale the fragrance of the great smoky mountains both spicy and sweet one of the most heavenly fragrances on earth the historic bridge in Tennessee known as the Harrisburg covered bridge is a picturesque sight that draws visitors to stop and appreciate the tranquil setting built in the late 1800s the bridge was used to connect two separate parts of the community divided by the little pigeon River the Harrisburg covered bridge provided passage for the people and allowed them to grow and expand if you were to walk along the wooden planks fastened neatly side by side you would enter the covered portion of the bridge and find the river below hushed by the tall trusses on either side perhaps a bird would fly in and perch on the beam above the sound of its melody would echo through the archway hear the song of the meadow lark echoing in the rafters the bird flies away in search of another place to land and share her heart song you look out one of the windows of the old covered bridge and watch the birds soar high in the sky your hands run along the weathered beam and you wonder how many people have stood in the exact same spot gazing at the river below this wooden bridge reminds you of Jesus the bridge to the father as your hands feel the roughness of the timber you can't help but imagine the crudeness of the wooden cross upon which Jesus died Jesus made a way the only way find great comfort in him tonight gracious God thank you so much for making a way when there seemed to be no way we look to the sacrifice of your son as he provided a bridge through his death on a wooden cross please Lord help this listener feel completely connected to you tonight but nothing stand in the way draw them Lord to your side and hold them close please lead them into a deep and restful sleep 
fill their dreams with visions of the Savior bridging the gap between their hearts and yours like a covered bridge of protection let your Holy Spirit provide shelter over them and their loved ones as they sleep in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen Isaiah 58 verse 14 says you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth let your soul take delight in the Lord tonight it is God who helps you rise above the troubles of this world he carries you on the heights of the earth over unsettled waters he provides a passageway of peace inhale the fragrance of God's peace although the Harrisburg covered bridge was a beloved thoroughfare it was washed away by a flood in 1875 nevertheless the people of the community came together to rebuild a passageway that would stand the test of time in unity they gathered what was needed to build a strong framework a faithful trust that could withstand every storm dear one the Lord your God is with you through every storm he provides everything you need to stand the test of time remain in the strength of the Father tonight over the mountaintops noble and sublime the Lord rises above the highest of heights over every troubled water tidal and deep the Lord slows the current so your feet can leap over the ravine no matter how wide there's no need to fear the incoming tide over the bridge where Jesus blood flowed the Lord made a way for you back to his fold sink into a peaceful sleep as you rise above the highest of heights in the protective arms of the father feel the freedom you have in the presence of God freedom to walk run and cross every bridge he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber holy God please watch over this child tonight no matter what has risen against them let them know that you are greater you never sleep nor slumber nothing exists beyond your wisdom help this beloved person rise above the fray as they keep their eyes on you for nothing in this world can overtake them when they are sheltered by your love please shelter them in your love tonight in Jesus holy name the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the fountains of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach
the restorer of streets to dwell in allow the Lord to guide you even as you sleep let him guide you to peaceful pastures with flowing water that satisfies your soul there is no drought in the presence of living water feel the strengthening of your frame as you breathe deeply of the Holy Spirit your bones your muscles and your tendons are being rejuvenated as you rest Holy Spirit please flow through this person bringing healing and restoration to their weary frame like a spring water whose waters do not fail you do not fail us O God your love is a continual flow for all eternity help us remain here now washed by the waters of your holiness cleansed made pure restored made whole renewed thank you for these things it is not by chance that the Harrison covered bridge is still standing today though it was nearly torn down in the 1970s people fought to keep it in place together they raised money that was needed and made the necessary repairs to make it the upstanding bridge it is today in unity people came together when it mattered most was important to their community became a central focus and a unified purpose be in unity with the father remain in focus with his purpose for you are important to him allow Jesus to be your bridge tonight a bridge to the father who loves you he is waiting with arms open wide to receive you into his loving fold Heavenly Father please cradle this beloved person in your loving presence whisper words of truth and peace let your Holy Spirit remain with them covering them through the night thank you Holy Father for welcoming us so completely just as we are we come to you now just as we are we ask you wash over us like a peaceful river of forgiveness and mercy with sounds of leaves rustling in the trees and rushing water below lull us into dreams of your precious son Jesus Emmanuel God with us he is the one we seek tonight as we sleep contentedly in your presence for Jesus our Savior is the only bridge to you to your heart and we cross that bridge willingly tonight in rest in peace and in full assurance of your love we cross that bridge tonight to sleep in Jesus holy name amen now hear the melodious words of these lyrics from the worship song holy and anointed one let them wash over you with comfort and peace Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one 
Jesus Jesus risen and exalted one your name is like honey on my lips your spirit like water to my soul your word is a lamp unto my feet Jesus I love you I love you Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one rest in perfect peace under the anointing of Jesus the holy and anointed one feel the hand of the Father as he pours his oil of consecration over your life you are set apart for him you are sealed by his spirit for all eternity rest in that truth remain in his presence receive his anointing Heavenly Father we bow before you tonight before your throne in humble adoration we remain here in your presence there's no place we'd rather be father we want nothing more than to be set apart for you to walk in your ways and to honor you thank you good father for anointing your precious child with sleep tonight in your presence they are comforted and loved as you stand watch over them in the night watches they can sleep soundly knowing that you are with them thank you for covering them with your spirit they will sleep peacefully in your presence dreaming of your fragrant anointing oil making them clean whole and set apart for you in Jesus name I pray amen if you've ever heard the word anointed before it may have been in the sense that God anointed certain people to be set apart to serve him in fact Jesus himself talked about anointing in Luke chapter 4 when he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor the anointing of the Lord is precious and purposeful settle your mind on God's anointing for several moments in the Old Testament Moses was given a recipe for the holy anointing oil the Lord told him in Exodus chapter 30 to take the finest spices of myrrh sweet smelling cinnamon aromatic calamus cassia and olive oil these were valuable spices that the Lord called Moses to gather he wanted only the finest ingredients for his holy anointing oil the purest of myrrh also called the myrrh of freedom in Hebrew sweet smelling cinnamon a rare spice that was much valued in that region aromatic calamus from the reed of a plant that grew close to the water God was specific about choosing the finest spices and from these spices Moses was commanded to make a holy anointing oil an ointment blended according to the art of the perfumer 
to be used as an oil of consecration inhale the sweet smelling aroma of the holy anointing oil as it fills the room this holy oil was used to consecrate the tabernacle of meeting the ark of the testimony and the altar of incense in order to make them holy for the service of the Lord not only that Aaron and his sons were anointed with oil to be sanctified as priests unto the Lord that they might minister before him all of their days this holy anointing was a symbol of being set apart for God set apart let those words sink in for several moments now please hear this prayer of anointing holy God we come humbly before you seeking the anointing of your presence we long to be set apart for you in all things Lord we offer ourselves in humble surrender for in you we live and move and have our being please cover us with the sweet fragrance of your holy anointing oil tonight settle our hearts and minds in the presence of your love and grace we seek true rest in you tonight deep peaceful uninterrupted sleep in the mighty name of your son Jesus we pray amen in Psalm 45 a psalm of love and declaration we read these words about God's anointing over his son therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad therefore God your God has anointed you rest in the holiness of these words for several moments all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia the scent of his garments or covered in the holy fragrance of God's anointing oil each strand of Jesus's sacrifice was woven into place by the good pleasing and perfect will of the Father just as a person weaves beautiful tapestry ensuring that each thread appears in its proper place God the Father wove his perfect plan through the life of his son so that we could live for eternity with him allow the tapestry of God's love and grace to secure you in his peace tonight God has anointed you with the oil of gladness joy and contentment fill the room the anointing oil of gladness rests on you like a comforting blanket all worries fade away 
they are replaced with God's perfect peace oh how good it is to abide in the peace of God's holy anointing abide here now in the oil of gladness for several moments this beautiful passage in Psalm 45 describes the Lord Jesus as the anointed one your throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom your throne O God is forever and ever the security of knowing that God is on his throne allows us to rest assured that he is in control over everything that concerns us he reigns above every earthly kingdom God rules let the eternal comfort of God's sovereignty settle deep in your heart for several moments we continue to hear about the precious anointing of Jesus as the psalmist writes you are fairer than the sons of men grace is poured upon your lips therefore God has blessed you forever gird your sword upon your thigh O mighty one with your glory and your majesty and in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth humility and righteousness fairer than the sons of men grace poured upon your lips with glory and majesty because of truth humility and righteousness rest in those beautiful descriptions of the Lord Jesus grace was poured upon the lips of Jesus that he would in turn bestow his grace on us oh what mercy what grace and what forgiveness we cannot comprehend the depths of his love for us for you even the deepest part of the sea is not deep enough to hold the grandeur of God's love for us for all eternity we will draw upon the waters of the Savior's love and drink deeply from the well that never runs dry hear the continual flow of living water flowing from the throne of God's grace dear one Jesus was anointed to bear our sin and shame he fixed his eyes on the cross out of his unwavering love and mercy over us his ultimate sacrifice is the foundation of our holy anointing by his grace through faith we are saved not by our own works but by the gracious gift of the Father breathe deeply a breath of thankfulness to the God who saves Jesus our Savior holy and anointed one anointed with grace anointed with glory anointed with majesty our God reigns forever and ever 
rest in his glory tonight oh Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth we praise you for you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords there is no one like you in your righteousness you reign forever and ever and in that truth we find peace by your anointing we are yours you are true to your word and you never fail us you lead us in truth and righteousness thank you God we praise you in the name of Jesus my friend as you drift off to sleep in the peaceful presence of the Lord there is yet another anointing I would like to remind you of it is far greater than the fragrant oil poured out in the tabernacle it is the everlasting anointing of the Holy Spirit of God for the word says it is God who establishes you in Christ and has anointed you he has also put his seal on you and given you his spirit in your heart as a guarantee his spirit is in your heart as a guarantee settle your heart and mind on the Holy Spirit tonight this beautiful anointing by the Holy Spirit is not to be taken lightly this anointing is the very hand of God on our lives the very same Spirit who raised Jesus dwells in us God has anointed us sealed us and inscribed on our hearts the guarantee that we will be with him forever God's promises are immovable unchangeable and unfathomable he has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee breathe deeply in that unchangeable immovable blessing right now therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad with the sweet smelling aroma of God's holy anointing oil surrounding you with peace breathe softly in and out take in the fragrance of myrrh cinnamon and cassia as a soothing balm of peace and gladness God is with you he loves you he covers you with his presence most holy God we receive your anointing hand upon us tonight we rest in the presence of your Holy Spirit in the stillness of the room we breathe in the fragrance of your love you are holy and just we abide in your holiness now 
hushed and settled for you alone lead us to safe and quiet places thank you father thank you for your anointing over us by the seal of your spirit on our hearts in Jesus name amen now hear the melodious words of these lyrics from the worship song holy and anointed one let them wash over you with comfort and peace Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one Jesus Jesus risen and exalted one your name is like honey on my lips your spirit like water to my soul your word is a lamp unto my feet Jesus I love you I love you Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one rest in perfect peace under the anointing of Jesus the holy and anointed one feel the hand of the Father as he pours his oil of consecration over your life you are set apart for him you are sealed by his spirit for all eternity rest in that truth remain in his presence receive his anointing Heavenly Father we bow before you tonight before your throne in humble adoration we remain here in your presence there's no place we'd rather be father we want nothing more than to be set apart for you to walk in your ways and to honor you thank you good father for anointing your precious child with sleep tonight in your presence they are comforted and loved as you stand watch over them in the night watches they can sleep soundly knowing that you are with them thank you for covering them with your spirit they will sleep peacefully in your presence dreaming of your fragrant anointing oil making them clean whole and set apart for you in Jesus name I pray amen I feel like when I listen to the sleep meditations that I have a friend next to me 